Hello guys, it's Oz. Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're taking a look at BioCircle and their new IPA alternative. Over to you. Talk me through BioCircle. What I know about BioCircle, James. Well, BioCircle are a sustainable and environmental manufacturer of clean solutions. We are worldwide based, 64 countries. Head offices in Goodisloe in Germany. UK operations based in Cheltenham. My job is in environmental process changing to help customers who are solvent based users change them to more sustainable environmental solutions that's safe to use less hazardous easy to dispose of as well so we're, we're here now in the in the 3d uh market uh additive manufacturing to provide sustainable alternative solutions to may i say to unfortunately the added the the horrible ipa and tpm solutions but it's not as bad as we say, or people say it is, because we can change those processes and make it a lot cleaner and easier for people. Uh, and then particularly the, the, the desktop users at home who are using those hazardous chemicals. Uh, and we've got to say, tap, 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 IPA and the home insurance, I don't think should go down very well with, with, with those people. So if we can help home users as well with these solutions, so we have a crossover from home to industrial, industrial to home, we're still implementing the same safer practices with increasing the um, uh, um, environmental aspect, reducing the hazardous aspect, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, and it's all about chemical balance. So here we have one of our water-based solutions. Okay, this is what we just brought to the market. And what we've been trying over the last four years, which we've successfully achieved now, is to create separation. So. This is a solution that was taken out of a wash tank last week. This is the solution, as you can see. Here is the contamination. So we've got resin, we've got ceramic fillers. As you, you can clearly see here, we've got a nice clear separation. That will then allow the cleaning systems to recycle and keep reusing the solution over a time of period. And in industrial usage, we're looking at 12 weeks, which is a massive cost saving on the usage of IPA a massive saving on waste disposal as well. And again, on the cost assessment side of health and safety regulation, you're making the environment a lot safer and a lot cleaner to work in. So again, we're looking at making sure the processes are clean up and that that's really the biocircle philosophy is a greener world. So and this solution can be used in, in multiple applications, either by hand, mechanical, doesn't matter. We're, you know, it's, it's a very flexible solution. So look, when it comes to home use, we have a lot of problems with IPA. One is that it gets saturated with resin really quickly, and there's not much of an effective way to reclaim back that usable IPA, right? Once you've once you've used it, we've tried curing it in UV. We try sort of trying to filter it. It doesn't really work. It doesn't really get you there. This stuff has a longer service life than that. Um, and what, as you can see, what they've done with the separation means that all of this material was still all of this liquid is still usable for washing you just have to clear out the saturates that are down the bottom there's also the reality of ipa as a as a product is a carcinogen is super flammable um it burns when it touches your cuts and skin and everything in between and it stinks it's super it's not super expensive but it is expensive when you compare it to this this stuff comes in at around three pounds a litre Right. What we're looking at here, obviously, is the fact is we, it's a concentrate form of solution. Yep. So depending on what the application and what the wash usage is, it's then diluted with water. So we're looking at an average of 25% dilution rate of a concentrate to water, and then the user can go go off and use it to 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 as many types of cycles they wish. Yep. Uh, and the, the key element is, as you quite rightly say, is just making sure that resin is cleaned out on a regular occurrence. So the solution will always remain clean. So if you get four weeks out of it, you're going to get better value for money. Get eight weeks out of it, you're going to get even more value for money. And then you're going to be coming down to a very low level of, of pounds per litre. Yeah. So it, yes, it is a cost effective solution. So we also have sort of your more industrial setting, right? Where this is obviously one of BioCircle's uh, cleaning tanks. This has a separation tank Correct. inside, right? as well as obviously the ability to clean whatever you're doing. It separates out the sediment and gets you even more life out of your material. But this is a direct replacement in home use for what is basically the centrifugal stuff that we have Absolutely. here, right? You could, use the, 
Absolutely. You can use it in a, in a, in a ham parts washing system. You can buy a lot of cheap models off, off Amazon and, and eBay. But also you've got ultrasonic systems. So I would guess a lot of home users would be using ultrasonic systems. Yep. Um, again, if I'm honest with you, it's an easier application than ultrasonic because they can easily empty their tank. They yep. can clean the jelly residue at the bottom, apply the, the, the clean solution back into the tank. So absolutely, you, you've got multiple uses, hand, ultrasonic, or in a mechanical activated device. Rob. So I want to be clear, guys, this is still a chemical. This is still a chemical that you're using, right? This still has resin mixed in with it. So we're still saying you still need your PPA, you still need your goggles, you Correct. still need your glasses. Yeah. You still have to treat this as a, as, a, as a chemical, but it's significantly less toxic than IPA would be anyway. It's it's cleaner, it's safer, it's less, ca it's no carcinogens. Correct. It lasts longer, it's Correct. cheaper. And it is just as effective as IPA Absolutely. in the cleaning yeah. process. It's all understanding the, the, the surface tensions of the resins so or, or the contaminants. And it'll act in a it's very, very similar way to IPA. But what our solutions do, they actually gets under the contamination and lifts it off the surface without causing any damage to it. Where IPA is a solvent and it applies a direct strategy to unleash the surface tension. So with resins on surfaces, imagine it's locked in like this. We're trying to do is, is just unlock those particles to dissolve away. We're not looking to penetrate and then causing further damage to the to the actual substrate underneath. So it's worth remembering that what IPA fundamentally does is it strips away the uncured resin right. by dissolving it effectively. But what we're talking about here is not really affecting the surface of the print, the cure yeah. print at all. We're just we're just injecting it into the layer in between and, and separating it yep. out. So you're going to get even a, you're going to get a higher quality clean, and you're going to get a lower level of damage yep. to a print. And for those of you who know, if you leave prints in resin, if in your IPA for a, an extended period of time, they will absolutely deteriorate and start to attack the surface. And we're, we're saying that, that that this doesn't do that. Correct. It's so, fundamentally yep. not a solvent. Correct. So it's just it's just removing that waste material. It's a high level water based cleaning solution. Right. And that's where we, that's where the difference are. And also again, if home users are using IPA, you know, we've got the issue of home insurance straight away. There should be a declaration. It should be kept off the premises. It should be kept in a fire retardant cabinet if they do have any. But with this product, take all that away. It's safe handling usage of the solution. Okay, well, I mean, guys, we're going to be featuring this on the channel soon, hopefully, um, and we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons of how this cleans versus IPA and some of the longevity as well. Um, so keep tuned for that. Thank, Thank you very you. much for the time. We'll speak to you soon. Yeah, lovely to see you, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, guys and dolls. Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're with Maker Tech and the ProForge 250, and we're going to take a little look at some of the secret sauce that makes up their new print. Talk me through what's new and what you learned from the original. So um, this machine is essentially a smaller version of our uh, machine that we launched last year, which was the ProForge Port. Um, the idea with this was to make tool changing 3D printing more accessible and more affordable as well for, for more people to essentially get into this technology because I definitely believe this is the future of the industry um, in general. The advantages of tool changing over, say, uh, multiplexing is that you're able to print individual materials without purging. And what that does is A, save time, and B, save material. So it's just a much more efficient way of 3D printing multiple materials. Um, this machine, besides just being a multi-material printer, is also a high-speed 3D printer. So We've got four motors on the gantry for quad core XY or uh, AWD. Yep. Uh, that allows us to do benches in around 13-ish minutes. So it is it is a pretty quick printer. Um, yeah, so the newest addition to this design from the previous ProForge 4 is the print heads. So these print heads, um, so if you want to get a close-up of this um, later on, yeah, I'm sorry, we'll yeah. do both up. But um, so, th so this is the Orbiter V3. Um, it's designed by Dr. Robert Larynx. Um, this extruder part end combo allows you to uh, print up to 300-ish degrees 
Um, it's also got a nice little LED and a filament sensor filled in, again with another LED um, indicator light there. Um, but the real magic with this is the dedicated toolboard at the back. So all the electronics plug into this toolboard, and this toolboard also has the uh, the stepper driver built into it. And then you just have one clean USB cable that then plugs into the Raspberry Pi. And this machine runs um, Glipper firmware. Right. So it really is to use. It's completely open source. And, you know, it's a very, very um, open platform or uh, 3D print in hobbyist prosumer space. So, I mean, so if we go back to when tool changes sort of first kind of started in the industry, really it was kind of E3D that formalized yeah. the tech. But let's be really clear, uh, that was on a duet board and a lot of the firmware was pretty locked down. That wasn't an amazing fit, finish or machine in general. We actually reviewed one, I think back in like 2017. Um, it was not a it was not a great experience so obviously you've built quite significantly on that the fact that you've got four motors on just on on the on the xy gantry you must be you must be doing some insanely quick speeds and i'm seeing a cpap machine to keep up with park calling i'm seeing in i'm seeing uh the new is that the tidal sensor oh uh, no so that's the eddy sensor that's the eddy sensor oh, yeah um but again it scans the entire bed We've also got three Z motors. They're independently driven. So so the bed mechanically levels and then also has a scanned mesh. So you get really crisp um, first there. So obviously at the show, this one is open for obvious reasons, but yeah. generally you can enclose this and therefore yeah. ABS and everything else is, is, exactly. is completely yeah. doable or again at insane speeds. So yeah, so it can be fully enclosed and we've also got a few filter at the back. So this is essentially, this essentially has, um, see, there's just never more uh, carbon in, activated carbon in Yep. And that basically filters the air and uh, keeps everything clean. Uh, well, so much in this machine that is A, just beautifully machined, <laughs> um, fits together really well. But as well, it's obvious that it's been made by somebody who loves 3D printing and has had so many issues over the years that they've tried to solve in different ways and has formalized and come through. And it has taken, you know, um, it's taken inspiration from other machines on the market, as, as, as our community often does. But what you've created is, is sort of a, a new animal entirely. So build volume-wise, this is 250 cubed. 250 cubed. Yeah. And then, the, and then, because your Proforge 4 was 400, was a rectangular base, was it? Yeah, so the Proforge 4 was 400 by 300 by 400. Right. This is a shrink down version of that machine. But it's a traditional build volume. Yeah, nice, build that square build, build volume. Uh, magnetic flex blade. So this is compatible with bamboo flex blades. So yep. you're not going to have an issue trying to find uh, flex blades on the market. Uh, yeah, again, it's, it's designed to be open and usable with the wider 3D printing community rather than being a machine that is locked down to just to just make it it works with um, other companies other innovations and the idea behind this machine was to build it out as a platform that can then be built on top of so similar to how voron have done a lot of their exactly. right where voron came into the came into the space they never formally made an actual Voron machine, right? Everybody's machine is a Voron and everybody's a Voron maker. This is this is you getting, this is, if you want to spec this out, you can, yeah. but if you want to iterate and continue to improve as your as your needs change, then right. it's all adaptable and upgradable and changeable and, and all of that. Yeah. Really cool. It's a really nicely finished machine. And you obviously implemented a lot of things that you've learned from, the, from previous machines into this as well. Exactly, yeah. So we... We've, we did the old machine uh, last year and we've got about 200 of those out there in the wild now. Right. And this machine, again, it just builds on top of what we learned from that. It builds on top of the technology that we, like, we, we basically perfect, what we feel is perf like the perfect arrangement of the technology is represented by this machine. Right. And uh, this, this is now like our 
They do baby. Yeah. <laughs> so is this going to be Kickstarter? Is this coming out soon? How are we, how are we launching this? So we're launching this on Kickstarter. It's going to start at, it's not official, but 800 here. Right. For the early bird with, uh, with just one printer. And you can get it kitted out with all three printers and the enclosure for around 1400 Okay, so still, I mean, we're, we're talking about an E3D tool changer, which is really one of the only things on the market you can compare this to. Really, There's not that many other tool changers that are out there that are doing this at this level outside of, I suppose, the Prusa XL. Um, you're still very, very competitive. Because a Prusa XL with four tool heads is, what, two and a half grand, three grand? Yeah. And an E3D tool changer is still like two and a half as well. Yeah. And it's completely locked down in configuration because it's basically a duet. So you have to become a mechanical engineer to be able to do anything to it. So, really configurable, really interesting design. Can't wait to see this going on Kickstarter. Thank you very much for the time. Catch you on the next video. Thanks very much.